Oh. Out! Out! Out of the house! Out of this house! Take and be gone from this house! <laughs> Take and be gone! Freaking use it like a fucking light. Uh, system. Out of this house! Speaking of Taken. Speaking of Speaking Taken. Speaking of Taken. Hello, in I don't want to sound like Matt, but hello, Internet! Hello, call out, those who call out watch game this little stream of ours. Welcome yes, the five people, news. I see you. <laughs> the five those, people who watch those, our stream, those, I see you. Those 20 people throughout history in the next five years. Hey, 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 it might be 21 if we work our numbers right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Hello everyone, welcome to the Middle Report, I'm Nick, this over here providing the gameplay is Justin, well Hello, actually man. I'm I'm assisting with that today as yes. well, him and his orange ass shit, but anyway. Orange? Okay, this I'm colorblind, is... shut up! <laughs> this is literally the Fallen's color. This is, is like the... Yeah, this is the season I of see the Splicer the blue, ship. But... Yeah, no, this is the season of the Splicer ship with the Fallen colors. I know it's a splicer ship, but is yeah, that no, this is the same is colors of the sh as like any other fallen ship. Hold on, let me put on. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's uh, the cabal colors. I'm pretty sure. I'm yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, that's some... but, but no, I was going through all the different Actually, shaders, and this is the closest that I can get to an actual fallen ship. Mm. So I, that's what I did. Ooh, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm gonna make it a fallen ship because it's a fallen ship. <laughs> Might as well look like a fallen ship. Might as well play the dang role. Yeah, if I'm gonna. Oh, I'm speaking of fallen, <laughs> my armor. <laughs> my armor. <laughs> take a look at that real quick. All right, fine. I'll take a look at that. Let me just uh, inspect you real quick. Inspect guardian. <laughs> oh, speaking Lord. of the fallen, this guy just like he he covered himself in fallen armor and then just took a dive in a great can of paint. Yeah, basically. Basically, really, really, that's the problem with using like thing, something like Stompies or, or Frosties and, and, or other exotics. Really, is you gotta go and see. you gotta go and make your shaders around the exotic. Because if if, I if mean, the exotic doesn't match the rest of the armor, then you you just gotta scrap it yeah. and find a new shader. That's the thing. You can't use shaders on exotics. You can use ornaments on exotics, and those are specifically for... Well, no. With Not the new all. seasonal weapons that are legendary, they're introducing ornaments for legendaries, but only for those. But 99% of the time, they're only for exotics, and so you can't really change the color. So, yeah, you're kind of right on that one. Though yeah. they don't stick out too much here. Well, mm, I'm a Frosties user, and uh, there's a lot of shaders where... All your other armor looks good, but then then you look at the, <laughs> White you look at the legs and you're like, why is this a pink red while everything else is a normal red? <laughs> it's strange. It's strange. Explain. I, I always, I've always liked how like the season of the splicer armor is like the first tier that everyone gets is just like literally armor based on like the spiders stuff and everything, and then the second tier is actually like House of Light stuff. Well, it's well, no. What what is it? No, uh, the second tier is like actual like House of Light splicer type stuff. Basically, yeah, the first tier is like a like the second tier is actually like splicer like House of Light stuff. But the first tier is basically just <laughs> someone stole armor from from Spider's armory and just slapped it on themselves. Yeah, kind of. Then again, he's always been pretty open-minded when it comes to stuff like that, so I don't even mind it. <laughs> it's like, I'm a pirate, oh, you stole blessing. from me, you know what, you, you played by the rules. You played by the rules. <laughs> I mean, it's good publicity for him, so I don't even mind. <laughs> yeah. Alright, well... Anyways, but, speaking of things in Destiny, we're not talking about Destiny Day. Well, we are, kind of, kind passively. Of, kind we'll of. get to that. Um... Today, we are talking about something probably everyone and their mother has heard of, and I'm kind of annoyed at this point, because this news actually broke back on Monday. So I've been sitting on this news since Monday. And, of course, since then, it's blown up all over the web, but that's the kind of problem with being a weekly show and not a daily show, is you can't report on things as they happen. Yeah. But, you know, this is a better format, because then we're not working ourselves to the bone constantly producing stuff, plus we both have lives outside of this. So yeah, well, well, keep in mind, you did text me about this news while i was at work so <laughs> my yeah. point has been proven my po <laughs> i mean if one of us ever devoted our entire lives to this whole youtube bit which i don't know maybe maybe then we might consider doing a daily show but personally i like the weekly because then we have to work a lot less and we well, can just even you know, you take, take news from my time. perspective technically i've been doing youtube since 
2013, but technically not. But mm. no matter what, I always thought of YouTube as being like a passive type of thing and you actually have a stable, strong job. That way you're guaranteed money. And then if you do have yeah. ad revenue and you do get donations, that's an even bonus that'll help you out. Like Yeah, it's more of a hobby unless you break it big and then you're like, okay, I'm a full-time YouTuber. Yeah. But let's be honest, not many people get to well, do no, that even, fast. Even if in some weird, strange, unknown <laughs> universe that I make it big and I start getting like a bunch of money from ad revenue and donations and stuff, you can start I'm still going to have a job. Gig. I'm still going to go and have a normal job because I, I want that like guaranteed secured <laughs> Like I yeah, that's the problem with YouTube. This X amount of money every month, like yeah. That, good... I mean, if you ever make it big and like do YouTube as a full time gig, there's always a possibility that it'll bomb out though. Yeah, which is always the internal possibility. I mean, maybe that's how like TV stars feel in a way. Their career <laughs> may always go downhill and they'll lose all their money. Oh God, <laughs> that's a terrifying fear. Nobody likes me anymore. <laughs> Nicholas Cage, do you relate? <laughs> so, so what's what's been Bungie up to? What, what's Bungie Anyways, up what's to? been Bungie up to? Like I said, everyone and their mother has heard about this by now, but we're going to talk about it anyway, considering it's big news. And it ju did still come out. It did. Yes, it did just come. come which so. is, again, the nice part about a weekly show, because then I can give news time to actually happen, yes. instead of burning the wick in both ends and then nothing is going on there. There's nothing to report. But anyways, so, big thing today. Sony bought Bungie. I'm just going to go right into the dark, mate. Sony just so, bought Bungie for the fat tune of $3.6 billion. The Destiny universe is now canonically connected to the Spider-Man universe. Yep, we've now officially got Marvel in here. We're waiting to run into the Hulk. I'm waiting to see that Iron Man crossover. Yeah. Stark Tower, let's go. <laughs> Actually, now that I think but, about it, Iron Man would probably fit perfectly fine within the Destiny universe, let's be honest here. <laughs> Actually, he'd, he'd, yeah, probably he'd probably fit right. in perfectly fine. That and maybe Thor. Yeah. Well, and obviously the Hulk, but, I mean, he's the Hulk. I, mean, eh, I don't know. The Hulk would stick out too much. Too green. Yeah, but the dude literally can jump, like, a thousand kilometers in one jump. So, if he gets I mean, in danger, it's like, I, I'm out. Gone. I feel like him and a... I feel like a fist fight between him and Keitel would be hilarious. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, anyways... So, but Sony anyways, so Bungie, Sony has taken Bungie. They have yeah. officially been taken. They, the Taken King is now officially Sony confirmed. Yeah, um, we've got two Taken Kings going on right now. Yeah, well, we killed the last one, so this is the replacement. Oh, I don't know. But uh, there might be a, a, a third on the way then. Oh God! But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's me. I'm taking the job. But. Uh, but uh, anyway, so there's a lot of questions here to dissect. Number one, what does this mean for Bungie going forward? Well, actually, I think we'll start off with what this means for Destiny first, because that's mm. probably the more pressing question, especially yeah. if you're a Destiny player. Yeah, Destiny is a multi-platform game. You've got Xbox, you've got PlayStation, you've got PC, and hell, there's even people who are playing it on Stadia, and I think also on the mo on the phone, apparently. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure that uh, one's a joke. I, but... No, I think, no, there's no phone for this one. There's a phone for Warframe they're working on, but not for this one. Yeah. I don't think it would... Well, actually, on the topic of a phone... I remember seeing an my... image once of, like, someone actually playing on the phone, or and I'm like, that probably I really don't know if that is real modded. or not, because if that's real, like, I can't play Destiny it's a, not on my official, laptop, I can tell you that and my laptop's but it's probably a modded. good laptop. What makes you think you can play it on a phone when <laughs> my laptop can't handle it? jailbroken phone i imagine there's no yeah. way that's official i should uh, know yeah but i mean here's the thing because of how modular destiny is as a game it could lend itself to that but there's one massive problem graphics yes. that is the crux of everything warframe can possibly pull it off because their graphics aren't that that intensive whereas this game there's no way in hell a phone is rendering this level of graphics well even yeah like it, it it's a telltale sign when like I have a laptop that's strong enough that can at least ha it should be able to handle Destiny on its lowest graphics. Isn't able to handle Destiny on its lowest graphics. So clearly, a phone <laughs> yeah, will be lied to me. <laughs> that's been lied to, but yes. <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing. Plus, there's also questions to ask about, as you said, multi-platform. Yes. What will happen in terms of? You know, Destiny. Obviously, Bungie actually came out the day this all went public and said on their forums, you know, promptly before their phones crashed because of everyone bombarding them with the same question, <laughs> understandably. Concern! Um, concern! Concern levels increased to critical levels. But um, the first thing they said was, 
that, yes, Bungie will continue to have autonomy from Sony and that Destiny will continue to be a multi-platform game doing what it's always done. And that makes a lot of sense when you think about it, because like I said, number one, this game's been out for quite a while now. It's been on many platforms for quite a while now. Plus, more importantly, well, probably on a side note instead of more importantly, they in back in Shadowkeep, which was, I think, two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Maybe. No, yeah, two years ago now because it's been a year since beyond light two years ago they went to the trouble of inputting cross save and cross play into the game and employing that on mass it is now fully deployed on mass and it has been since beyond light which is again one year ago to the day almost well not to the day but one year ago so that means if they were ever to stay exclusive now with sony and maybe pc they'd have to rip all that architecture out that yeah. they implemented for cross save and, and cross play I mean, which would be a massive pain in the ass well like it would be a pain in the ass it would be waste of money and when you really think about oh, yeah. it, you make more money by being multi-platform than you do not being multi-platform because being mm -hmm. multi-platform guarantees that you're reaching multiple areas because there are some people who may have a pc and an xbox or some people who just have a, a playstation they're like there are different people who are only able to play some games or just exclusively play on certain platforms so mm -hmm. it, that you so they just be shooting be themselves in the foot all. Plus, I really doubt, in the words of, like, Paul Tassi, who kind of one of the people who kind of originally reported on this, hmm. that, at least I think, God knows if there was the original. I, I don't know. Maybe it was Sony who said it originally, and they just picked it up. But anyways, he said, I really doubt Sony, or Bungie, I mean, would ever go exclusive in general. Reason being is that they have been very, very big in recent years, especially after they broke with Microsoft, about keeping their own independence. Yeah. That has been the make-or-break deal back when they were with Activision, or even before then, when they were looking around from another publisher after they split with Microsoft. That was their big make-or-break in the contract. We keep rights to all our games. If we split under any circumstances, we get to take our toy and go home. Mm. Many publishers weren't willing to do that because, again, if they make something profitable, no publisher in their right mind is going to want to give that up. Activision was one of the few people who did, which is why, despite everyone's protests, including apparently in the company itself, they went to Activision because they were the only ones who were willing to say, okay, fine, you keep your toys if worse comes to worse. Which is why Bungie is still making Destiny and not Activision, which, god. <laughs> Actually, no, in light of recent events with Microsoft, it would now be Microsoft making Bungie, or making Destiny, which is even weirder to think about. Master Chief in, Hale Master Chief in Destiny confirmed? Yes. They could finally start doing those official crossovers. <laughs> Maybe so. Maybe so. But, uh, but anyways. So there you go in terms of is Bungie uh, or is Destiny becoming exclusive to Sony? No, not in a thousand years. Bungie themselves has said it. And are in your, Sony's own world. Are strikes, work, Crucible, and Gambit matches going to be exclusively on PlayStation? No. 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 You're fine. You're fine. Personally, I've always played Bun Destiny primarily on PlayStation. For me... So it wouldn't impact me too much. Uh, he plays on PC, my dear editor over here. So Not, he would be mainly impacted because slightly. you know, you know, when you realize you can go and watch a video, record for a video, and play a game all at the same time. Yeah, multiple screens, sit on chair. You know, <laughs> I've fine. got one laptop. Shut up. Sixteen <laughs> things at once. Yeah. My processor but... is so strong. And then Strong breaks, comrade. Then it breaks because because it becomes super heating. Conductive yeah, of it heat. It goes from becoming a processor to a fucking micro oven. But, it just um, becomes goop. That yeah, that, goop. that that much metallic goop. goop. Yeah, there you go. But but yeah, so it wouldn't affect our streams possibly way too much on the topic. Mm -hmm. But again, a lot of people play on other platforms, so it's <clears> important. Yeah. So Bungie, at the very least, is keeping Destiny exclusive. What about everything else? Well, in Sony's own words, when they were addressing about what Sony is treating my, um, Bungie as now that they've been acquired, in their own words, they are now an independent subsidiary. Which basically translates into they're just another arm of the company that they can have their own autonomy. It's not direct control like what Activision did with Blizzard. It's very much, we own you, yes, but you get to do your own thing. Yes. We own you only in title, really. That's an oversimplification, admittedly, yes, on my part, but you get the kind of idea. Yeah, the idea is there. 
So, so what does this mean? It again, it really means that I doubt Sony would make Bungie's stuff exclusive. Mm. Again, kind of to quote Paul, who again put it kind of best from everyone I've heard so far, is that Sony kind of read the tea leaves, so to speak, as he says, and kind of figured that exclusivity isn't going to keep them alive forever in terms of the kind of evolving gaming marketplace. Yeah, yeah there it gets to a point where you're like you cut off games from so many people and so many markets <clears> so <throat> much that clearly no one's going to get it. So why should they bother? And this, and I, I'm, and this very much most likely spoke or kind of came in the wake of Microsoft buying both. Um, who's the guys who made uh, um, Zenimax? Hmm. Zenimax uh, last year, and then this year buying Blizzard, Activision Blizzard, which are two massive giants in the games industry in terms of publishers. Which, again, makes sense on their perspective because they were lorded, or should I say, uh, criticized a lot back in last gen and the gen before that for not having a lot of first-party exclusives that can set them apart from things like Nintendo and Sony. So, yeah. that being the case, it makes sense that they would acquire these two studios in a way of massively increasing their portfolio, which they did just that. However, this also kind of shows you the depth of their pocketbooks. I suspect is a knee-jerk reaction to that. Sony had to retaliate in order to preserve their own content. Because again, if because again, Microsoft has had this idea for a long time now of breaking down the walled garden, as Phil as Phil Spencer, the kind of head, uh, current head of Xbox, has called it. He doesn't believe in the console wars anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he wants to get his things of, on as many. Platforms. Yeah, to to quote both. A few videos, as well as my friend once said, it, it's not about console wars anymore. It's about who has the best publisher for games, who, mm -hmm. who has who's who's got the the best dog that's making or finding the best bones, basically. Yeah, I think right now, and another great way of putting it would be that right now it's gone from hey we've got the best exclusives to now something of a uh, of an almost studio arms race. Mm -hmm. calling it now in a way the game developers are now or game publishers or not even the big three let's just call them microsoft sony and well nintendo's always been nintendo so i doubt they'll get in on this they've got everything but um nintendo's always just subsisted on itself so mm -hmm. they're fine yeah. but but these two massive giants are now in an arms race with each other. That was kind of started by Microsoft showing just how deep its pocketbooks are to expand its portfolio. Sony's like, well, crap, if we keep this up, no one's going to be left in the marketplace that's individual, that's massive for us to make money off of. As you said, who's finding the best bones? We got to act now. Yeah. And Bungie is kind of one of the last big independents in the marketplace outside of like CD Projekt Red and maybe a few others. And yeah. yeah, there's Ubisoft, and there's Ubisoft, and I can't remember one other, but let's be honest, Ubisoft has always acted as an independent for years now, publishing its own games. They're fine. Yeah. But Bungie's really the last, one of the last big independents in the marketplace, so it makes sense they'd get scooped up by Sony, because again, it's kind of an arms race we're in right now. So... But again, I don't think they'll push for exclusivity because that's kind of the whole name of the game here. Yeah. Yeah. They're just trying to get people on their side who can make good games. And where they put those games, yes, will primarily be on their consoles, but that doesn't mean they won't shun other consoles as well. Because again, the great crux of exclusivity, when you think about it from a business standpoint, is, well, yes, you are forcing more people to buy your hardware to play those games, you are at that same time shunning a lot of profit you get naturally from just putting it on other consoles in general. Because remember, regardless of whose console you have, the money still flows to you. Yes. You're just trying to push those numbers up a little bit more by forcing everyone to buy a console on the side. Which, in the modern age, there's a big push. Well, not a big push. There's still many years of hardware left. Like, at least several generations of consoles still left. But you can clearly see this shift from a physical marketplace with consoles and hardware to a to a marketplace with software. Again, things like streaming services are taking over. You can kind of see that. And so it makes sense that they'd want to get a bunch of publisher or developers on their corner who can make great games 
for those inevitable streaming services, for those inevitable marketplaces. It's not about hardware anymore. It's not about pushing hardware anymore. It's about pushing software and getting that software on as many hands as possible. And to do that, you need good product. So naturally, you make fi- you find people who make good product and you buy them. Yeah. So, what are we going to be doing here? Yes, we've been kind of sitting in orbit yammering for a little while. Uh, let's give the people something to look at instead of our beautiful, beautiful ships. Hmm. Pick something. You're usually the gameplay guy. Pick something. Just go to I a strike. Object. All right, a strike it is then. It's the simplest and easiest thing. Fair enough. Let's do a strike. I'll be honest. There's only only so many tabs that I can keep going to to provide some little entertainment on the menu here. <laughs> You've just been doing that. For I've last, just like, been going five, and tabbing minutes. through all the menus. Oh god, so just you don't get do here. Fair enough, but uh. That's the, that's the nice thing about Destiny, instead of like instead of Sea of Thieves bringing that up weirdly on the side, because we've played that in the past, is that you can pl- you can do these voice calls, and you don't have people other than the fire team listening in on the call. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Which you... is the problem we discovered with Sea of Thieves. Yeah. Well, kind of. A little. You, a you, little you and your toggle oh, just, talk. Rather just than as I say talk. this... Just as we do this, I have something in the bungee tips in the loading screen come up about their multi-platform and stuff. Kind of feeding into the point that they're really selling that. Which, again, makes sense. Ooh, I like this one. Here we go. Speaking of Keitel. The right of proving. As I said before, uh, I usually play on consoles and on the off-tands play on PC, so if I don't... Uh, play as well here, forgive me. That's yeah, just because worry, I'm not... The, I, I've, I've got you covered, mate. <laughs> there we go. Plus, I'm also playing on a laptop, FYI. <laughs> Peek behind the curtain. I don't actually have a beefy PC to work with, so I just play on a gaming laptop. Which has its perks and disadvantages. Just a bit. But, you know, it works. That is yeah, what it matters. Works. Missile! Oh yeah, by the way, I figured, uh, I finally got the catalyst on the Forerunner. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah, I, I was working on the catalyst the other day. I was actually sitting on, on the, the new dungeon made for, uh, for the 30th anniversary as, uh, a way to go and grind for the catalyst. Well, no, I, I finished it. I mean, I, I got yeah. it a while back. I finally finished it. Yeah, no, I, I've still been working on it. I'm finishing it up. Yeah, it's a pain. There's a lot you have to freaking do. There's a lot it. more than, like, the, the, what is it, the sweet business. Actually, hold on. Cover me for a second. How the heck does this work on PC? I know it's B. I know, I know it's uh, something else on console, but how is it? Oh, it's R on console for this one. That hurts. I don't have any orbs of light, therefore I don't have the resistance. Oh. I don't have power! <laughs> I don't have my protection. I don't have I'll protection! Be honest, that, that, Help that, me! That, that, um, the, the orbs of light, um, the resilience you get, that, that one mod that I wanted to Oh, let's try this, let's try this. Oh, shit. You killed him. I was gonna use the frag grenade. Oh. Just so we see what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, it's just when you, you hit R, or no, it's... What it's after it? a kill. After a kill, you go and... and yeah, after a kill, you press R, and that'll... Cons- yeah, after a kill, you press R, and that'll consume some of the magazine, but it'll allow you to throw a frag grenade instead of your regular grenade. Interesting. Oh, there we go. I was gonna say, uh, the doors were open Wait, and nothing Leave it, leave spawned. it, leave it. Frag! Ah, oh, there you go. That was a good frag. frag. Yeah, no, the doors were open and the enemies didn't spawn, and I'm like, excuse me? Give me <laughs> Let me in. All right. So, what, 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 what do we think Sony is going to be doing with uh, the acquisition of Bungie? Well, like I said, they called them an independent subsidiary, so I'm thinking this is probably going to be the first of a few acquisitions for them. Or maybe this was, I think this was purely as a response to Microsoft's acquisition spree, especially considering every time they seem to acquire a new studio or publisher, in the case of Activision Blizzard, who counts as both, they set a world record with how fucking much money they dropped doing it. Just a bit. So I think Sony just... I think Sony felt threatened, is I think the best way to put it. And it's understandable as to why, like I... Like, 
As we kind of said in the last video, when it comes to things, I think we're finally starting to see the true depth of Microsoft's pocketbook, and they're trying, and they're really busting open their piggy bank for, uh, for exclusives and or for new producers and stuff like that. So, is this is gonna be? I think the easiest way to summarize everything is: is this gonna bring as much shakeups as it did with Activision Blizzard? As a studio level, no. In fact, I think this is kind of inevitable in terms of acquiring acquisitional studios. Is Bungie going to change much? I don't think so. I really doubt it. Because again, they've been very, very adamant about keeping their independence. And I think even like Bungie themselves even said, we are continuing. Like They even said we are still controlling our own destiny if they really wanted to. Because of course they had to say that, but... You yes. Know. But they had to say it that way, but... um. You know, it's still that Adam and C of they want to still have complete autonomy with their product. And I suspect this isn't going to be like... Because again, they are working on a few other games in the backdrop. And Bun and Destiny is their big moneymaker right now. So is this going to change Bungie's games and Destiny in the future for like exclusivity? I, again, I really doubt it. Like I said, they've been really adamant about keeping their independence. So I really doubt they'd cave to the demands of Sony. In fact, I think that was probably one of the things they made Sony agree to on the concept of being owned. Yeah. Under the uh, under the stipulation of being bought, I should say. Yeah, it, it's it's always been something Bungie's wanted ever since Microsoft. So it's it mm -hmm. kind of makes and sense. it makes sense. Why am I slowed? Ow! I'm being attacked. Yes, because there's revive. When you get melee. There we go. Oh, is oh I didn't yes, know that this was of, on. That, yeah, the, the, that's one of the daily or weekly things going on right now. I did not know that that was the modifier today. Yes. Or this week. Yes. No. No. no oh way. no. <laughs> or or you get stasis. Wait, the cabal shouldn't have stasis. Yes. This is lore problems. Yes, but when you when you mail a, it, it goes stasis uh, yeah. mode. Ugh. SMGs are not good at long range. So you say. Oh, hello there. Yes, hello there. No, uh -huh, no, I was talking about a second uh, scion that decided to spawn right beside you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, goodbye. So, something that I think Sony is definitely planning on doing is going and helping to fund for any new media that Bungie wants yes. to do. Yes. That's but another point we've actually, I've completely forgot to discuss, which is, <laughs> you reminded me, yeah. what does this mean in the future just outside in terms of what Bungie will get out of this deal? Obviously, money. money. In fact, one of the like um, one of the comments I was reading on one of the videos I was watching about this actually put it quite well, where they said that now that they're owned by Sony, this mm. hopefully will give them access to more studios that will help produce for De for Bungie uh, for Destiny. I mean, like back when they were working with Activision, because back when they had Activision, they had several other studios helping them produce stuff for Destiny outside of themselves. Which is why we got things as big as, like, Forsaken, where we got two locations in one expansion. Which they've even said will never happen again. For yeah. obvious reasons, I imagine, considering how much work it took to do it. Well, but now they have well, Sony's you, money yeah, and you resources. Say, you say never will happen again, but... Again, you know. Chances are it may. Now! Bef at that time, yeah, probably at the time, not. Yeah, definitely, now that but got... now... But now, maybe, maybe not, because like I said, this will give them more resources. And more uh, money, obviously. It's kind of like what you were saying when we were discussing YouTube. It's better to have a steady source of revenue in some ways than to have, like, one thing a that may... Random one. They're not random, but, you know, something that's a little more volatile. As, if they're owned by Sony, then this guarantees they're always going to have someone paying the bills. Provided they're producing. It's not like Bungie, where it's like, unless they make a certain amount, they might risk going under. Yeah. Or, I mean, it's not like Destiny, where if, where if Destiny suddenly doesn't become profitable, they risk going under. Because this is really the only horse they have in the race at the moment, so to speak. Yeah, they, on they only have so much money. But let's be honest, that I don't think that'll ever happen, because anyone who's played Destiny will tell you, it's a bloody money printer! Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got a lot lot going on for it, so... Hell, I bought a silver ring from Bungie, just for finishing some raids, so well, I yeah, am I remember, guilty of no way funding this. I remember adamantly you going and having us and, and some of the others yes, going and was my... a raid, that way you may get your ring. 
completing the raids back before they got rid of a good chunk of the raids so I could get the raid silver ring. That was like my obs that was my obsession for a little bit. My precious. And for the record, it still is. <laughs> st I still like looking at it. I've even worn it a few times. But uh Regardless. Yes. Probably should not have said that on live TV, but whatever! It's fine. Oh, I mean, say live TV. Ah! Curses, Ignovan! You thick of all you! It's like when they were choosing a champion, Keitel was like, What is the thickest man we have? Ignovan, you are. You're, you'll do. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about about it. I'll force him Hello, every out. time you get close I'll to me, he's like, I'll force him there out. There we go. He's like, no, you shall not have him. Revenge! Get him. I really chunked his health away. There we go. Alright. I'll let you guys deal with that part because it'll catch on fire. Missiles! Missiles! But, yeah, frankly, out of all of this, you don't really need to be concerned if you're a Destiny player. You don't need to be concerned about Destiny going and becoming just a PlayStation exclusive. No, you, I really. Like, there's. And, and, and next frank, no Frankly, this is just. If you're a Destiny player, you should be more excited, frankly, because this is more funding for Bungie, so Bungie will be able to go and put more time into their, uh, their next expansion after Witch Queen. They will hopefully actually be be encouraged now to go and branch off with uh, their media and like something like a movie or a TV show. So yeah, I imagine that was always probably part of the that, table. Yeah, like, that that that's the main part that I think the reason of the deal in the first place is to go and be able to branch off in the first place. So, yeah, I think that's kind of one of the big things they get because we were kind of talking about this before the stream in a little bit. Is that Sony? They're really only big other horse in the race in terms of like their business model in just general is that they produce hardware for t they produce TVs, they produce sound equipment. That's their whole go to thing for the longest time now. PlayStation yeah. has always been their other source of revenue. But other than that, they really don't have much. They're not like Sony or not. They're, they're not like Microsoft that basically owns every PC that doesn't have an Apple logo on it. Yeah. So. You know, they have a lot less prospects or a lot less methods of making money than Microsoft. Which is why their their amount of cash has always been a lot smaller than Microsoft's. So now that they have Sony, or now that... This kind of all fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> but now, now, now that, now that have... Bungie is there, the only yes. real exclusivity that I think could possibly come out of this is some form of exclusivity when it comes to producing that new media that that those tv shows yes. those movies it's yes. really the only kind of exclusivity that i can think of yes other that's where that, i was going with this uh, other than that any any game based stuff will not result in in any kind of exclusivity because bungie bungie has made that clear when it came to making the deal yeah, yeah. That's always been one of their big points, and that's kind of where I was going with my last point, which is now that they have Sony backing them, they kind of have now the money and resources, because again, Sony's big in the TV business, to now make other media outside of video games for Destiny, which has always been something that everyone's kind of wanted and something I'm sure they're very much into, because like I said, back when they used to make uh, Halo, they loved doing live action stuff and live action trailers. Mm hmm. Even when probably animation well, was starting to get cheaper. Well, no, like, even take take some of the animations that are in-game when it comes to the cutscenes and stuff. That That's made with, like, live-action, like, li live people. Like mo and, and Yeah, the mocap. So I'm not sure, like, even, even, like, doing something like that, using the actual game's engines and, and making, like, a show or something, using the game, game's kind of engine to go and create a cutscene like movie type of thing but it's just you know longer than a cutscene <laughs> well, i'm not sure about the mocap bit but well, you know i certainly know that like 
It would but, uh, be interesting because then it would look like it's from the game. It will, it'll be very detailed on like the actual direction of the characters on how they look and how, how they feel and everything. So it would be interesting. Well, I mean, back when they were still doing Halo, they loved doing things like movies and stuff like that for tie-ins to the game. So mm -hmm. I can certainly see them doing that. They certainly have a, uh, a love of branching off into other forms of media with the things they do. Again, take Halo. Yeah. So... You know, it's certainly a possibility, and I'm sure that's something they've always wanted to consider. And now that Bungie, or uh, now that Destiny is as big as it is, that's certainly something they're probably on the table considering. In fact, I think the creative director, one of the two, the two original leads for Bungie, have moved from simply leading, or at le for the two leads for Destiny, have moved from one of them being Luke Smith, has moved from being the creative director of uh, Destiny's game to Destiny as a franchise for multimedia projects, which is basically them saying they are considering other pr avenues of using um, Destiny oh, as a franchise. And everything, yeah. So. And one of the easiest things would be a TV show or some form of movie or something. Yeah. And now that they have Sony's money and budget, they can do a lot better in, in terms of quality with that. And I imagine with modern animation and the way it is, with their kind of budget that Sony has, they could do some really good work, because let's be honest, the live actions they've done, in my opinion, have been good, but they've always had a little bit of jank to them. Just a bit, just a bit, but, you know, we don't talk so, about that. We don't talk about that. Uh, yeah, let me see if I can get a frag grenade in. Who can I kill for this grenade? There we go. Grenade! Good God! <laughs> that grenade is dangerous. Alright. Yeah, I see some heavy ammo. So, long story short. Unlike with Activision Blizzards, whose acquisition is both a good thing in terms of a studio, but a bad thing possibly in terms of the long run for the games industry, this, I really don't think so in that, in the same regard. I think this was more inevitable, if anything. And I think in the long run, this was always going to happen, because I think Bungie's been kind of shopping around for new publishers for a while. They kind of like working yeah. with publishers. And independent is nice and everything, but let's considering how like devoted they are to keeping their independence, I really don't think that any kind of publisher would change their formula. So it really is just more money for them at the end of the day. So is this going to change Bundy's mode of operandi? No, probably not at all. In fact, I'm very certain not at all. However, I have heard some people say that this might mean that Destiny 3 is a possibility. Though I personally think that I was mean, kind of inevitable also as well. Let's go to the point of Destiny 1 and De Destiny 2. Destiny 2's content, what the core content that made Destiny 2 Destiny 2, is now gone. Like, hmm. we're only going and getting the, the Darkness Saga and we're getting the, the Light and Dark End Saga now. I mean, Ness is like what we're playing on right now. It's kind of one of the few remnants from original D2 still here. Yeah, yeah. De Nessus is probably like the only other place besides. Well, no, besides um, the EDZ, but even then, like, mm -hmm. there's nothing left from original OG Destiny 2, and that's that's so the one thing that's kind of gonna suck about it. I mean, that's that's kind of what happens with live service games. So, yeah. Well, not always. I mean, not for example, always, take wow, some, some. It's just, I think it the whole reason on, it depends on on the content and what they're doing with it. Well, I think the whole reason is, like I said, they're kind of bound to consoles as well, so they have to kind of make safe because again, consoles have more than one game. So yes, you could have a massive game like Destiny, but here's the thing: while that might work on PCs, where you might have a PC specifically devoted to Destiny, considering they're on consoles, they have to be like, oh well consoles will have more than one game on them, so we can't make Destiny 2 too big at any one time. Yeah. Which is kind of why they did it back in Beyond Light, because they, according to what I heard, it was getting so big that it was just becoming like, completely madness for... It wasn't even fitting on the discs anymore. 
and I mean, I'll, I'll say it here, I'll say it for what it is, I, I can see what Bungie's planning on doing with uh, the vaulting, now, with uh, them going and adding some of the strikes and, and uh, technically the vault of glass raid. I, I can well, see I mean, what they're doing, but hopefully, you know, they- He do doesn't like the whole thing. concept. I don't, I really don't. It, it, I, I like the whole Halo type thing where you, if you want to go and play some of the old campaigns, you want to play like the old missions, you can technically do that whenever you want. Like this is not, not looking at uh, an MCC thing, this is looking at like I can go and load up like an old disc and play the game whenever I want. I can go and play that campaign whenever I want. You, well, in fairness... Like, once when Witch Queen drops, no one's going to be able to go and play Forsaken anymore. AKA, no one's going to kind of get that last moment of Cade. Well, I mean, in fairness, this has always kind of been something that was part of the cards from Bungie's perspective from the beginning. The only reason that didn't really happen is because when they were acquired by Activision, Activision started pushing for the idea of turning uh, Destiny into the next COD, where they wanted an annual release, kind of like what they were doing yeah. with COD. And that, that, that I can understand why you wouldn't want to do, because do, that, that is bad for any game. You just, you don't want to do that for any kind of game. No reason whatsoever. Yeah, and that's why one of the re... And that's kind of why Destiny 2 came to be. And once Destiny 2 came out, now that they're free from Activision, they don't have to do those annual releases. And mm -hmm. they always wanted to make Bungie or Destiny. I keep saying Bungie and Destiny act like interchangeably. But let's be honest, they kind of are. Because it's oh, the yeah. only real big thing they have. But, um, it's not a bad thing, though. No. But... They've always kind of wanted it to be an evolving world with an evolving story. So it makes sense why they'd pull things out and pull things in. Because, I mean, look at, for example, my always rebuttal to like, oh, let's play old content. Well, here's the thing. When you play old content with things like the new, with the old strikes from D1 that they added back in, that were just literally copy-pasted back in, here's the problem. Some of the characters that feature in those strikes, yes. like this one specifically, well, for example, well, okay. Cade features in here. He's dead. <laughs> yes. Well, no, I can understand that to a certain extent, but that's that comes to the point of well, then at what point do you do you, do you reach a point where you need to you know section off certain things to a new game type of thing? What do you mean by that? Like, Cade is dead, so. In a way, you could have ma they could have made Forsaken kind of like the end ending for Destiny 2. You 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 see Cade and and his fire team go and survive like the greatest kind of thing that could end a Guardian, and then you witness at the very end all this work to go and prevent people from dying. One person that you you weren't really able to prevent die dies. Like, I mean, in fairness, that, that could have been the ending to Destiny 2 and then Destiny 3 could have been like uh, this whole awakening to the whole world of everything in total with the darkness and, and what well, that was really kind means. of like, well, from what I hear, this is just what I hear. So mm -hmm. don't quote me. I'm just this is from what I kind of remember. That was Activision's plan. They wanted Forsaken to be the end of it, and then Beyond Light would be saved for Destiny 3, and thus they would continue their annualization. Mm. Bungie didn't want that because that would just feed into the annualization, so they're it like, would. no, 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 it no. Would. No, I can understand that. I can understand that. It's just, at what point do you need to realize, okay, our, our storage is too high, we need something new, maybe. Because when you go and wipe away all content, like, I can understand wiping away, like, some of the content but the one thing that i don't is the red war because the red war campaign at the very least was the major major part that went and made destiny 2 what it was this whole mm. game of the light has been taken away you are not a guardian but you are a guardian you need to survive like your death is final there's no coming well. back well, that's the thing. If they want to keep an evolving story, they just necessarily have to keep moving on. I get if they that. keep the Red no, War around that. forever, then they'll never be able to move beyond that. Well, yeah, no, I get that. I get that. It's just it sucks for for new... It does suck, like, It does but... suck for new and returning players, because new players don't get caught up with the story at, at all. If they want to be caught up, they have to go Ooh, online. Like, they have to look at YouTube videos. Just, just... And then returning players go and see, like, something that that they love just completely gone and there's no memory of it besides like video recordings and screenshots and maybe some of the weapons and armor they got i don't say this often and i really don't think 
and coming from me, it, it, it kind of sounds hollow, but I think you're taking it too personally. Yeah, I would say you're dead. Yeah, no, that's that's a you thing. Because I've, I've heard, like, big Destiny players basically say the same thing I did. Like, don't get me wrong, I can see where that mentality comes from, and I kind of agree with it, but here's the thing. For an evolving story, they're just naturally going to have to have, an, like, a continuing thing. And that's kind of the whole point of, like, accomplishments, right? That's kind of what they want to push for the thing of, like, accomplishments. If I beat the Red War, for example, and they have knock-ons to the Red War of, like, you know, for example, a call-out from a character of, like, oh, you beat the Red War. Well, if someone new comes into the game from, like, three years well, later, yeah, despite no, the fact that no, the Red War yeah, ended no, three years that, ago. Yeah, no, that I can understand. It's like, you, that, that, that part is something that I understand, but let's be honest here. There's not much that Bungie's done with referencing that other than the Saint, Saint 14 campaign, really. Back in, like, the early years, there were actually a few things. Like, for example, in the Year of the Drifter, he calls you, like, the hero of the Red War and stuff like that. Okay. Plus, if you're in Gambit, you actually get references to uh, Warmind when he says on occasion, I keep forgetting you killed a god or two. Yeah. So they are there. It's just you have to kind of look for them. Yeah. It, it's very, very subtle. And, and frankly, th this if your thing was hollow, then this is going to be hollow, but... If, Again, if that, it's just a that's, possibility. That's the main point. You get like one or two lines in in a in your thing. Besides, like actual really hard. You you did this. No, you get like one or two very subtle lines. It doesn't that that, that doesn't feel rewarding in any any real way. Well, again, you you can't please everybody, right? No, I mean, it, I, I I I will say it for what it is. I actually do hope. Bungie goes and has like some some plans to really go and like you you did this like kind of like what they did with the uh, Saint 14's campaign at the end there like how Saint goes over all of your achievements even for yeah. Destiny One I I honestly yeah. hope that they do more of that because that that really goes well, I'm and sure shows they will. people's achievements and what they did and that, I'm sure that, they that, will that, it'll really go and like make it worth you know all of this is gone now. Shit, slowed. I mean, in fairness, the whole reason they couldn't bring in Mushroom D1 is because now that when they kind of scrapped D1 and D2 due to the kind of annualization that Activision wanted, they had to... S I remember back when D2 came out and they revealed that the vaults that you had back in D1 were all destroyed? Oh, people were yeah. pissed! I was yeah. pissed, understandably so. I mean, Which is why they couldn't really. it made sense. It made sense for the story. Gameplay-wise, that kind of thing better not happen again because clearly, no, I, I, like story-wise, they're not—they're going to be prepared for that. You could do that once, but I don't think you could pull that twice and have the same kind yeah, of like, it's like understanding. Oh, oh yeah, all the guardians, all of their 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 vault, like vaults and everything are gone. <laughs> totally, no one would go and make a stockpile after the Red War that doesn't involve the vaults. <laughs> Yeah, like, nobody wouldn't start, like, having, like, backup plans and stuff like that, and, like, backup servers for all the weapon data that's being held, and yada, yada, yada. And I think that's what they themselves even said, like, again, they didn't even like doing that, I think, but... Holy Activision wanted it, but... But again, that's kind of the thing, because once they did that, they couldn't exactly hold anyone's achievements from before Destiny 2, because again, everything was released, there was no way to keep track of anything. Sure, there were a few achievements that they were able to scooch in before Destiny 2 came out, but for example, take me. They credit me for killing orcs, which is nice and all, but I never played the final raid. Which is partially because since nobody played the raids back then, because it was a lot harder back then yeah. to get teams together to play raids... But also because there was really no way to track specific achievements. So like, well, you completed the Taken King, we'll just say you killed Oryx and be done with it. Despite the fact you don't actually kill Oryx until the raid, technically speaking. Well, you know. Potato, potato, apparently. Yeah. It's a pain, but now that they're able to keep track of things a lot better, I suspect to keep going in the future and you'll start seeing a lot of official callouts. Like, I, I'd be I, shocked. I, I honestly queen. hope they bring out callouts because they've removed, like, they're going to be removing four campaigns now. That's a lot of content that they've removed from from Destiny in a, in a, as a whole. So I honestly hope that they... Well, my logic is that they're probably going to do this. If you see the timeline, it has the last three expansions, and every time a new one comes out, one moves to the left. My best guess is that they're going to remove 
every expansion, they're going to remove an expansion that's three years old, but they're going to keep the content from expansions well, yeah, no, for at least three Shadow, years. Shadow Keep is next, so. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it makes sense for the sake of an evolving story, but it is a bit of a problem well, for, you know, people well, like who want to experience it. Here's my one thing, okay? I can understand Shadow Keep being removed for the point of Cade is dead, so any new content will not involve Cade. So any legacy content that does involve Cade is going to be confusing. <laughs> but something like Shadow Keep doesn't really involve any major points that would ruin future plot. If anything, well, I mean, it would it be something Sabbath. that would tie Ooh, in things. It would go and be content that would go and help explain a few things. Because oh, really, well, the whole point of Shadow Keep kind of goes and explains the pyramids a little bit. So it gets you like it allows you to give background information on what's going on now with the pyramids and and the Black Feet Lee. Well, that's the thing, though. Here's the thing: the pyramids even say, "We are coming. Uh, you're already here." Yeah. And if there's any references to say the cro the swarm of Crota, well, here's the thing: in Shadow Keep, you kind of killed them all, so. Yeah. They have to work around that, too. So it is kind of like a give-and-a-take process. Like, I can see where you're coming from. I'm not saying that's a wrong opinion yeah, to have. No, I like, can see it's, why it's, that would be it, true. Well, no. Like, the, the major point there is is something like keeping Shadow Keep or, uh, yeah, Shadow Keep or Forsaken. Forsaken would have a much bigger impact on future content if you kept it rather than, than uh, Shadow Keep would. Because, sh like I mm -hmm. said, Shadow Keep isn't, like, a big nail in, in what's going on compared to what Forsaken was. Yeah, it was a little... Admittedly, it was a little bit more Kate, side tangent. Kate, Kate being dead isn't... Like, he isn't in any new content, so it makes sense to get rid Duh. of the past content that does involve him. Speaking of... Yes. You know, one, one of the strikes that'll soon be gone. Eh. I'll be honest, the, the, this strike uh, doesn't really get me that much. I've been grinding, like, uh, the Hollowed Lair to see if I can get Cade Sparrow, but the drop rate is so freaking low, it's a pain! Well, what... Technically, you... Real quick, real, real, real side, side talk audience, we're... we're, we're just if we haven't already first. been at this point. <laughs> we're, well, no, this is side-side content between two, two people who played the game. <laughs> what Do you know what exactly can drop Cade Sparrow? The like, actual the logistics drop rate, but like, yeah, yeah, what, like, what, what the actual can? dropping things that can drop it are three things technically: the story missions, which let's be honest, nobody really plays them because it's a real pain. No, you have to make a new character every time. So that's the one um, that, that sucks when it comes to Destinies. You do need a new character to do that, which is yeah. That's AKA why I think they're the like reason why I have two hunters. I mean, that's why I said, I think, that's why I think they're kind of, like, trying to make, they even said, like, in Witch Queen, you can replay all the story campaigns on, like, harder difficulties and stuff like that, yeah. because I, I people want to replay like, the story missions. I like the idea that they're going with when, uh, what they did for Beyond Light, but actually make it so that you can replay the stories, because that's, used the, to have that's that. the thing, there's literally nothing that, that should stop you from being able to do that, because of the fact that the content is there. It's part of the game. It's it's. Oh, watch out! Watch out! Oh, is it right behind me? Yeah, oh, there's a blowing up guy. I'm like, I saw that on the motion tracker. I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, but um, like that's the thing. Like it's part of the game. It's part of the content. It is there. So there's nothing really that that should be stopping you from being able to replay it because it's still there. Yeah. So, well, I mean, there is something stopping you that the selection and as well as any well, mechanical I mean, D1, things right? that goes into the code that Bungie has set up that might go against that. But Well, I mean, take D1, like I said. Back in D1, you could replay all the story missions for all the expansions that were there. They were just like mission nodes that you could take on the map. Mm -hmm. And they had that back in D1 originally too, not mission nodes specifically, but you could go to Ikor and her original function was to be like, oh, you could meditate on certain events ah, like, yes, every week like, or re so. Rethink about your history type of thing. <laughs> Which is a clever way of saying just replay the story campaign missions, but um... ah uh, yes, reflect on your past. You use the, this this shotgun and an SMG. <laughs> what now are you doing? I'm reflecting a... on my reloading yeah, animation. Yeah, now, now, now you're using a bow and and a hand cannon. What are you doing? I'm imagining what would happen if I did things differently. <laughs> but uh, but then they eventually took that out for some reason. Mm -hmm. 
but they've always wanted that, or but people have always wanted that back in. So them doing that back well, in and Witch Queen, like, that, is a long that, time that coming. That goes to the point of that I made earlier, being that people want to replay content. It's just you can't. Like the reason why they get rid of the campaign is because nobody's playing it. Well, I wonder why nobody's playing it. If if well, they get rid of the campaign because it's old and they need to move on. Well, that's not too, that nobody's playing that it too, but. Like, there's not many people going to be playing it in the first place because of the fact that you can't. Like, if someone well, has, I mean, I mean, a char like, every character slot filled with, like, a Hunter, Warlock, and Titan, well, obviously they're not going to be able to play the campaign because they have to get rid of one of their characters to do that. Well, no, it's like, they've always wanted, they needed to get rid of it. It's not that nobody's playing it. Like, they've even made it free after December until Witch Queen for people well, who haven't yeah, done it yet. Yeah, but that's, so. that's for anyone who hasn't actually officially played it i'm talking about people who want to replay it. yeah yeah well i mean that's just again that's kind of always being in the cards it has nothing to do with really who's playing and who's not oh wait back to your last question about where it drops from mm -hmm. it is story missions um officially speaking it drops from the bounties not the actual like bounty bounties you get from him but the actual like you know go after this person and kill that yeah, guy the, the spider, spider 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 hunting bounties and the hollowed lair those are the only three places but the drop rates uh, for all three of them are so low well do you know the drop rates for them all or no not officially the numbers but i've been told that they're like super super low well it might be worth going and figuring out what has the highest drop rate and just do that grind that out well i well i think it's not that they have like higher drop rates in certain areas than others it's just that they're all low across the board. Well, yeah, but there has to be one that has a slightly higher drop rate than the other. I wouldn't know. I don't think anyone's really looked into it, honestly. Yeah, I'm willing to bet there is someone, because there's always so like there's always someone who crunches the numbers for that kind of stuff. It's well, the if that's internet. the case, it's a thing. I don't doubt it, but like I I don't know of it personally. But no. anyways, I doubt anyone has the official numbers, perhaps. But no. who knows? No. Which is why I've been trying to grind Broodhold yesterday. Speaking of which, how long have we been streaming for? I've kind of lost track of time. Uh, we are almost at an hour. Okay. But Maybe after this we'll call it, because I think yeah. we've kind of covered our points for the main topic, at yeah. least. Like, like, like uh, we said, I'm stuck. you don't need to worry about... Um... Ah! Curse you. You large abdomen alien. Oh no. You, you don't... Oh. You don't need to worry about... Um... Oh, that's it. Missile! How is it taking this long? Because Boy. that's... Bro, you're literally more... At this point, we're just going to end up killing you here. Alright. Yeesh! But, Some people. Like, the, the point, main point has been made. Like, if you're worried about any content being exclusive, don't. You're fine. If you're a Destiny player, you should actually be more happy and excited because... This will mean that Bungie will be able to do more. They'll be able to, like, take longer and, and, you know, put a lot more work into their future content. And yeah, this I... does mean that if you're in, ever ever been, like, interested in actually viewing, like, stories that don't involve the game, but, like, stories that are through, like... Like movies TV and TV movies, shows. If you've ever wanted something like that, well, now is the time that... It'll, that that kind of thing might actually be in the works now. So Yeah, they might be leveraging Sony's T V connections. So there we go. There you go. Alright, let's finish off this strike and uh we'll call it a day, shall we? Yeah, we'll call it a day. You get to see the wonderful creature known as Ara. Ana. Uh, I mean Ana? you mean the same thing that we've seen basically three times now? Yeah well. Pfft. Yeah no. Yeah, no. So, <laughs> pish posh. Don't I worry. swear, if I could multiply myself so easily, it would be so easier, but no, 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 no. Oh, I love how we could take, like, forever to kill the last thing, but this thing is just dying, like, immediately. Yeah. Well, I mean, both me and the other guy are just kind of wailing on it with our swords. Here, then, let me assist you. Yeah, Hold it. Your super. Hold it. Hold it. Fight! And there we go. And that's both. Yep. There we go. So anyone who, who who didn't get that thing that you told me about a while ago, where you go and destroy both copies all at, at, together. There you go. <laughs> there you go. We got it. 
Even though I probably got that one before you did, because I've done that. Well, me? Lot. No, I've had that since for a second. No, oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, I actually got it by accident way back in for a second. I'm like, oh, no, that's I, a I got cheap. it by accident too, because I just kill them both at the same time, basically like that. So <laughs> you just you get, you get get everyone doing their super at the same time for that part, and it's like, oh, there you go. Goodbye. <laughs> it's like Phew. goodbye. All right. Well. Make sure. All right you, then. Make sure you hit that escape. There you go. All right. So that's that's been that. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's really, been like, that. Like we said, this is a good thing for destiny players like bungie can can hire more people they can work on content that they want to go and push into just yep really last i heard they're not thing. hiring across this the board officially thing. this is the best scenario for bungie because they get to keep their rights that like they get to keep all of the the, well, and the stuff scenario, that they but... want like they get to go and publish the game they get to own it they it can be multi-platform like well, again, it may not be the best thing in the world, but again, no real cause for concern in terms no. of Bungie's real output. No. As an industry as a whole, again, going back to kind of what I said back with Activision Blizzard, this was more, this was less of, this is going to less cause major shakeups. And, well, this will cause major shakeups in the industry. It will. <laughs> because, like I said, we're now in something of a studio's arms race with the two major uh, well, I think players we were, being I Sony think and Microsoft. Well, I we were in that when Microsoft started doing that. It's just, they've ramped up the speed at which they're doing it now. Microsoft did that, and no one really paid attention. Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard, and that scared Sony shitless. Yeah. I imagine. Like Microsoft but... bought a few industry or a few studios a little while ago, and they've been doing it since. And then they just decided, all right, we're we're getting a big boy now. <laughs> and then that woke everyone up to what they're really doing. So, as an industry as a whole, this was inevitable. I'm. My best advice would be expect more news like this in the future. In yeah, the there's going to be a lot years. more years, a lot more purchasing of of little companies and studios now. Especially that, because Bungie was like the last one of the last real big uh, in develop uh, developers in the marketplace that were independent. Because let's be honest here, you've got them, CD Projekt Red, Ubisoft. Technically speaking, but Ubisoft has always been an independent, like an independent that's been working in and of itself for years now. So I really don't think they're going to sign with very, anybody. It's a very loose thread. Yeah, it's a very loose thread. I doubt they'll ever sign with anybody. They've officially crossed into act to what uh, Activision or what Blizzard used to be. Well, now Activision Blizzard, where they became their own publishers. Yeah. So I don't think they'll ever sign with anybody. Well. I like how you make that point. It's like they they went to where Activision Blizzard is, you know, being their own publishers. Meanwhile, Activision Blizzard gets yeah, purchased now. by Microsoft. Yeah, now, but again, well, welcome, I, I think welcome to Agario. No matter how big the ball is, there's always a bigger ball ready to eat you. Well, I think that was more because Activision Blizzard, right? Like, was in the middle of massive controversies. Again, going back to our last video again. Yeah. Look on that one if you want more information about that topic. Yeah, they which had is, a lot going on, so that, they were that in the middle of just would help them out, keep them alive, and you know help yeah. Microsoft down the road once when everything's yeah. cleaned up. They were in the middle of some major lawsuits, major political heat for their horrible workplace environment, and I'm sure Microsoft just came along and was like, "We'll sign with us, and we'll make all your problems go away." It's like. At least as Sign far as the shareholders us, were concerned. Be ready to resign you. Uh, you too, over there. Uh, you're probably going to get you're fired. Uh, <laughs> you're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're promoted. You, down. You, you down the hall. Uh, we might be moving you because, let's be honest, you're not good for that position. You shouldn't have been put there. But for some reason, the management put you there despite your qualifications in this field. So we're going to move you here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly well hopefully you enjoyed we'll uh see you the next week for another midweek reporting yeah we'll see you we'll see you all next week i hope you enjoyed remember to like that sub the link remember to click that like and subscribe button yes and as always good night